Okay, we're taking a look at some anatomy of the back for now. And we've got a lot going on here and many different layers of musculature. So we're gonna try and work our way through from superficial down to deep. Superficial then, we're beginning with the upper back and down to the mid back as well. Cervical and thoracic spine. And we've got the trapezius group. So the trapezius muscles, they call that because they make the shape of the trapezius. Um, we've got upper trapezius fibers. Think about this all as just three separate muscle groups, although it is one continuous muscle. Upper trapezius, mid trapezius, lower trapezius, and these muscles all have different actions on their affected joint, so the scapula, um, and they all have different origins and insertions as well. So this muscle, they insert onto the acromion, so the shoulder just over here, spine of the scapula, and also the lateral third of the clavicle. And that's their insertion. The origins are vast and numerous. So we're C7 all the way down to T12. And we've also got the nuchal ligament as well as the uh, occipital ridge up here. So we've got lots of strong um, insertions for the origin. The actions then. So we have to go muscle by muscle, upper, mid, and lower, because they all do slightly different things. Um, all three of them actually upwardly rotate the scapula. So the difference between that would be downward rotation there, and upward rotation there. So one way of differentiating that that's quite helpful, if you pop your hands together in front of you and then shrug, so we tend to see a downwardly rotated scapula. And now you bring your arms out to the side, just like this, all the way out a bit further, like that, okay? And now if we shrug, we'll see that upward rotation. And the same with arms down by your side, just abduct the arms out as well. We'll see that upward rotation there. So that's the trapezius that are beginning to affect that and upwardly rotate. Um, upper then, we'll begin there. They act on the shoulders, they also act on their origin at the neck, it just depends on which one's fixed. So we've got elevation of the scapula and the upward rotation as well. Um, as far as the neck goes, we've got extension of the neck, so it's going to bring the neck back, the muscles on the back, so it shortens, it brings it back into extension. We've also got lateral flexion to the same side, and then we've got rotation to the opposite side. And if you're wondering how that works, we've got four major muscles around the neck, or at least the ones that we focus on, um, and three of them rotate to the opposite side. The only one that rotates to the same side is a muscle called levator scapula, which we're gonna talk about after this. Um, have a look at the anatomy of it, have a look at where the muscle fibers go. Levator scapula is gonna to go to the same side of the neck on the um, transverse processes, whereas the trapezius are actually just gonna cross over the way their fibers go. So imagine now a muscle going from there to there and it shortens, it's gonna pull the head in that direction. So that's how that works, that's how it rotates the opposite direction. That's the trapezius. Mid trapezius, they occupy this portion here. Um, they give a scapular retraction, just retract the scapula together for me, these perfect. Uh, and they also stabilize the scapula there as well, you can relax. And then the lower fibers, they're at the bottom of the upper fibers elevate, lower fibers are gonna depress and upwardly rotate as well. So a lot going on there, it's the most superficial muscle, but it's the biggest one. We're gonna look at levator scapula here now. So we remove the trapezius group and we look at levator scapula. This is a muscle that inserts onto the superior angle of the scapula. And it's one of those areas that people tend to come into clinic and they say, I've got pain just there, you might have experienced it yourself. Um, usually it's dysfunction in this muscle and usually just to generalize as a result of uh, poor postural tendencies. Um, but that's a story for another day. What you need to know about this muscle is that it does the same thing as upper trapezius, which is to elevate the scapula. So just shrug there for me, please. But as we saw before, and then back down, upper trapezius elevate, but they already rotate, and then levator scapula up, downwardly rotates with elevation. Uh, so we don't just duplicate muscles, it does a completely different thing there as well. Um, that originates from the transverse process of C1 to C4. So up here, and you can see the way it kind of twists in so we can access it more easily at this distal portion, just down here. So that's the beta scapula, of course we've got one on each side as well. And that, like I said, acts on the neck. It naturally flexes to the same side, but it rotates to the same side as well, and it extends the neck. So that's this, this top section here of the shoulder girdle. Um, we've got more going on there, so we remove that layer and then we've got a group of muscles in here called the splenii muscles, splenii cervicis, splenii capitis. I'm not gonna to focus too much on them, but there is a lot going on in here. The ones that I do wanna focus on 
is this one just here, which is serratus posterior superior. So a lot of us know about serratus anterior, which we're not really going to talk about much today. It's underneath here. We've got serratus posterior superior. It's buried underneath those upper traps, um, so we forget about it. But this is uh, primarily a muscle of um, exhalation, and it's in there. Don't forget about it, because we all like getting some work done on the upper traps in the shoulder girdle area. We forget about that one. It can become significant, particularly on respiratory problems that you think might be musculoskeletal. Drop down just below that, we've got the rhomboids. Rhomboids, again, they get their name from their shape. And we've got a major and we've got a minor there as well. Uh, minor is going to be from the spinous processes, so these projections of the spine, C7 to T1. And then we've got rhomboid major, which is the bigger of the two, which comes from T2 to T5. They essentially do the same thing. Um, as each other, rhomboid minor, rhomboid major. They insert onto the medial border of the scapula, and guess what they do? They squeeze the scapula together. So scapular retraction, so retract the scapula for me, please. You can see those rhomboids there working beautifully. Uh, elevate at the same time, they also do that, and they downwardly rotate. So that's them in action, and relax, good. Um, remove them, and we've got another layer. So this is the erector spinae, and we've got different muscles of that group. This is really, um, a muscle group of the spine. It's made up of three different muscles, which are iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis. So I, long, for spinach. And they work their way from medial to lateral. So we've got iliocostalis out here from the ilium to the costal to the ribs. And then we've got longissimus, it's a long one in the middle, and spinalis is closest into the spine. So these have many, many insertions at every level of the spine, uh, but they do occupy some space here, particularly longissimus, and spinalis. So don't forget about them. They're on the backs of the extended spine, but they're also uh, bilateral there on either side of the spine, so they laterally flex the spine to the same side as well. So the big one, the elephant in the room we've not mentioned yet, is latissimus dorsi. So latissimus dorsi, what really interests me about this muscle is that it's the only muscle that connects the pelvis to the arm. So this becomes very important in things like gait and in human movement, um, it's something to consider when we're looking at the bigger picture, definitely. It's a huge muscle, but it's quite superficial and sinewy. Um, so different techniques that we can use to get into this. Um, what does it do then? It adducts the arm. So just add up, bring your arms into your side for me, please. Good. Bring them down and push into your hips. So we've got adduction there. We've got extension as well. So bring the arms back and we've got medial rotation as well. So that would be the last work in at their shortest position combination of adduction extension and medial rotation. So you notice there that I said movements of the arm and not the scapula, because this muscle actually originates from the scapula among other places down the spine and inserts onto the arm. So this muscle inserts onto the bicipital groove or the intertubercular groove of the humerus, which is that little groove right in between uh, the greater tubercle and the lesser tubercle. But the long end of the bicep runs through. Um, that's why it does that to the arm. Its origins, like I say, are vast and numerous. We've got the inferior angle of the scapula. We've got the spinous processes of the last six thoracic vertebrae. We've got the last six ribs. We've got the thoracolumbar aponeurosis, which is this whole thing down here, uh, which gives us that Christmas tree-like effect on a very well-developed set of lats with uh, very little body fat, and also onto the posterior iliac crest as well. So there's tightness in this muscle and it's fixed at the origin. Um, or at the insertion, I should say, it can even act on the hip and give us a bit of a hip hitch. It's something worth remembering. While we're down in that area, the last thing that we're going to look at here is QL. So QL is quadratus lumborum. You can get from the name, it's quadratus, it's square shaped, and it occupies the lumbar spine. So this muscle is, it's kind of blocked in. It's a, a four-sided muscle. It's a square sort of rectangular shaped muscle, and it comes from posterior to the crest to the last rib. And it's got very strong insertions um, on the spine there as well, the lumbar spine. So you've only got this little portion here that hasn't really got any origins or insertions or anything like that. It's the only point that we can actually really access it is through there. It's fairly deep as well. Uh, this is another muscle a bit like levator scapula that can cause people a lot of problems. And it's because it tends to compensate for dysfunction in other muscles. This muscle being where it is, it, it tilts the pelvis, it hitches the hip. It can also laterally flex the spine as well as assist 
in extension and forced exhalation. Did you notice there? Inserts onto the ribs, so it's very likely that it's going to act in some way to aid respiratory, whether inhalation or exhalation. So the last thing that I should mention, although this isn't really necessarily part of the back, is there uh, is the rotator cuff group. So the bridge between the muscles of the back and the rotator cuff group for me would be teres major. Uh, teres major is just on this lateral border of the scapula. It's like the final third here of the distal portion before you get to the inferior angle, and that inserts somewhere up near the insertion to latissimus dorsi, and it has exactly the same actions. So in the same way that we think rhomboid major, rhomboid minor, they do the same thing, you can almost think the same thing about latissimus dorsi and teres major. It often gets called lat's little helper. Rotator cuff group, you'll find this in another video, I'm sure, but we've just got everything that occupies the back of the scapula here, infraspinatus and teres minor, which uh, sits just above its little brother, or cousin, I should say, teres major. But that's all we're going to say on that because we're focusing on the muscles of the back. So I hope that you've enjoyed that. That's a bit of anatomy on the musculature of the back.